Coming up on episode 148 of Creative Writing, I'm sharing how to cut your wasted time. I can't go back to sleep, it's almost light. These restless thoughts have cut me up again. Hello, hello, and welcome to Create If Writing. I'm so glad you're here. This is the podcast for you, a writer, blogger, or creative who wants to build an online platform without being smarmy. And today I am continuing on with the sort of theme of cutting back on stuff as we enter into January and new year. I might get into goals, but right now I'm into decluttering. And no, I am not one of the people watching Marie Kondo on Netflix. I am resisting. I'm resisting. But I am going to help you cut down on the clutter of wasted time. Is that a clutter? No. I'm going to help you streamline your time. And I don't think I said my name. Hi, I'm Kirsten Oliphant. If you're new to the show and I'm your host, I am really excited about this topic because I think I'm going to approach it a little bit differently. I do have some tools and apps that I'm going to link to in the show notes that you can find at creativewriting.com forward slash 148 for episode 148. But I'm going to give you kind of a more big picture view of how to cut back on that wasted time and share a little bit about how I did that last year and accomplish my goals and even possibly might accomplish the goals I made last year for this year in my very first month. Okay. Ready for that? Let's let's talk about cutting your wasted time. Okay, so as I mentioned, yes, there are apps and different things like Rescue Time and Toggle and some others that will help you actually track the time that you spend. And that's really important. Some people in the community that I asked who actually use these tools because, spoiler alert, I don't, um, recommended these and other tools, but also a few people recommended just writing things down when you do what. So we're going to talk about that, but that's often what people think of. And for me, I like to start with the big picture. And this really relates to episode 147, where I talk about cutting back on your business expenses and the whole idea of ROI. I feel like for a long time in the podcast, I talked about your why, and I'm still hugely into that. And I think the very next question, um, once you figure out your why, like your overall big goals is ROI. So what is bringing in a return for your investment of time and money as it relates to that big goal. So let me put this into some perspective for you guys. I've talked a lot on here about uh, my fiction writing because it's been my focus for this past year and I've learned a lot through it. I basically took the things I already knew about marketing and blogging and social media and writing and went ahead and applied them to launching a fiction pen name. And the pen name's Emma St. Clair. So I talked last year and kind of joked, but not really, about wanting to have an Emma empire. And I joked, but I really meant it. And my goal was, um, I started last December with a short story. So, I mean, yes, that counts, but it was not really, it was just a barely scratching the surface kind of start. And I didn't have a goal of how many books I wanted, but I just wanted to start And so, you know, it took me a couple months. I think I launched the very first book in March and then another in May. And then from there on out, I think I went months and released seven or eight books uh, through the rest of the year. And so my goal was to hit a $5,000 a month from book sales month by December. And I actually hit it in November with $6,000 a month. Now, the next month it went down because I didn't I didn't actually release a book in November. <laughs> Those were all book sales from the books I released in October, which is amazing. And then I didn't release another one till the 23rd of December. So that's why that went up and then back down. And that's the thing with this kind of income, but that's a whole other story. So my goal last year was to build the Emma Empire and to get to that 5K a month goal. And what that looked like for me was to say, okay, my big picture is that. And what that means is that I need to cut away anything else. And it wasn't all just wasted time. It was things that I love, like this podcast, which I took a hiatus from summer. You know, it had to do with summer, but also with uh, the writing. But during the summer, it is harder to record because my kids are home, um, all five of them, and they're not 
quiet and sometimes at midnight I don't feel like recording when my house is quiet. So um, I cut the podcast out. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other things, but there was a lot. I cut out my lifestyle blog completely. I had been kind of sporadic, um, but I cut out writing at kirstenoliphant.com. I had some other plans and things I was going to launch, but I realized that if I wanted to have an Emma Empire and reach that 5k goal, it wasn't just about the wasted time. Uh, although I did cut things like TV almost completely. It was about other things that were taking my focus off my big goal. So going back to kind of that why, like my why for last year, why I was doing the things I was doing. And even to back it up a step further, my husband was transitioning in his job. He left his job, was trying to find a new job, doing different things, but we didn't have a consistent income. So I had even more fire um, under me because I was trying to figure out, okay, is this something that can pay our bills? So my whys may not be yours. And that's really important when it comes down to deciding what to cut. And I'm going to get into that. Uh, I'll circle back to that. But overall, that's kind of my story for how I want to illustrate this whole idea of cutting back on wasted and other time is being really, really clear on your goals, and then taking out anything that is not related. And again, you may not have to be that strict and that depends on your why. If I was not trying to help pay our bills with this income, I could have been a little bit less intense. But I also, I love goals. I really, really, really liked hitting that 5K goal. It was like such an amazing moment for me, even though I didn't hit it that the same goal that next month. I had a good month, but I didn't hit quite that 5K or 6K. Um, but I knew that it kind of spread out over the other months because I didn't have a book published. So it was fine. But I do like the challenge of that. But because my goals were very intense, I was very intense about cutting time. So when we're talking about this whole idea of coming time, cutting time, you need to think about your ROI and you need to think about your goal. So let's talk about ROI. Uh, that is return on your investment. And people say your time is money. And that is true, but it's kind of intangibly true. Like I'm not getting money all the time for my time. That's not quite how it works. But we should, when we're coming down to what's wasting our time or what's effective with our time, think about our time as money. Where are you investing that time? And is it bringing something back? So the ROI is the return on investment. Most people think about that as money and I talked about this last week, I'm going to reiterate it all the time, but it's not just money, it's more than that. So here are some questions that are similar to the ones I asked last week with where you're spending your money. But when it comes to time, here's some kind of tweaked questions for that. So as you're asking about the ROI of certain activities that you have, does it bring in money? Does it save time or make more time? Does it bring me joy? Can I do without it? does the amount of time spent bring forth a comparable result? So for that last one, just to explain that a little bit more, maybe you get a really cool result, but it takes you four hours when you could have hired someone for $15 on Fiverr or in a virtual assistant group and gotten just as good of a result, but not wasted four hours of your time. So that's kind of what I mean with does the amount of time spent bring forth a comparable result? And so these questions can help you determine the ROI for some of your time and activities. And here's where those apps come in, because we're not always the best judge of where we're spending our time. And again, I am not the best person to recommend these because I do not use these kinds of apps and tools. Maybe one day I will, but they kind of are weirdly contrary to my nature and make me feel, I don't know, maybe I'm just contrary, <laughs> but I don't like them. So I do have uh, some tools that I want to share with you guys um, that my community members shared. So, and a lot of these I'd already heard of, but I've never used them. And so these are personal recommendations from people in the community. And meanwhile, if you're not in the community, I have a free Facebook group that is full of really helpful, wonderful people, just like you, who are at different stages of their creative work and have questions and answers and conversations. So you can go to createifwriting.com forward slash community to find those people. So here are some recommendations from the community. Rescue Time. And this was recommended by Roland Denzel from Eat, Move, Live 352. And I know that he actually uses this because he talks about it a lot. Um, I've heard of this one a lot. He does the paid upgrade. This has free and paid, which seems to be the way of many apps these days. And his will send him warnings if he's wasted too much time and will allow him to block certain things. 
Sarah Merchant from Workaday Services uses Toggle, which has no E on the end of it. It's T-O-G-G-L. I don't know why, but that's really pleasing for me to look at. I've always appreciated the way that word looks without the E on the end. Um, but she recommends this. She uses it to track her own personal things, but also for clients. So if you do client work of any kind, freelance writing, virtual assistant, or anything else, that's one that works well for that. Melody Hansen also does client work and she uses a tracker. And this is another one where she plugs in where she spends her time. And at the end of the month, you get sort of a report that has your tasks broken down into categories so you can see over the whole month, which is pretty cool. Susie Oakley uses, I don't know if you just want to call it Flux, but it's F period L-U-X. And this isn't a time tracking app, but I liked how she uses this. This is one that will dim your screen, and I think it might just be Mac only. Um, it will change your screen depending on the light that you're in. This would drive me crazy. I'm one of those people that likes light a certain way, like both in terms of the kind of light bulbs I like to have, but also I like my screen insanely bright. So if it dimmed, I would be like mad about it. Um, but what she does with it is she tells it kind of when she's going to bed and it starts kind of dimming and giving warnings for when that time is approaching, which is really good if you're someone like me who wastes a lot of time at the end of the day. I used to be super productive at night. And now what I've found is I'm not, I'm not very productive at night. I end up just scrolling on Facebook and not realizing I'm not doing anything. Last night, I discovered that I put the salt and pepper into the refrigerator. When I got up this morning, I opened the fridge and the salt and pepper were in there because I'm just not like on top of things. My, my thinking is not very clear at night anymore and I'm not senile yet, not yet. Um, and so <laughs> nighttime is not my best. It might be really good for me to have one. It would keep me uh, from ordering weird stuff from Facebook ads, which is also something I do at night. Um, anyway, so that will help you in a different kind of way for saving time. And then Katherine Turner from Path to the Best Seller List uses fresh books, which I've heard of as well. And that's really great for client uh, billing. So if you're, again, if you're working for people and you have clients, but she also uses it for time tracking for herself personally as well. And I also want to recommend, this is a book that I bought years ago, and I, I would say it's kind of like a classic. I think it came out in 2011. So can we call that like a new classic? But it's from Amy Lynn Andrews, and many of you guys also get her weekly email. And uh, she has a book called Tell Your Time. And I love the subtitle to this, which is How to Manage Your Schedule So You Can Live Free. And so I've linked to all of these in the show notes if you want to try out some of these. But when it comes down to it, the steps are really simple for cutting back on your wasted time. The hard thing is doing it. So if you want to see the very simple steps, it really looks like this. You need to identify where you're actually spending time, whether you're using an app, whether you're writing it down for a day, a week, whatever you want to do, you have to identify where you're actually spending the time. And then you have to identify the ROI of where you're spending that time. So again, remember the ROI is more than just money and also to think about the ROI, you have to think about your goals. So if you're not clear on your goals, then it's gonna be really hard to tell if something is actually giving you the return that you need it to give you. And then this is the tough one. You need to cut out, adjust, schedule, delete, or whatever action you need to get rid of the things that you don't need and to focus in on the ones you do. And I'll leave you with this um, kind of to give you my goals for the year, which are a little bit mushy right now still. I'm not sure mushy is the best word, but they're not super clarified. Um, I haven't committed to them fully yet, um, but it will kind of relate into this whole idea of cutting time. Um, so when I went to a conference in November, it's called the 20 Books to 50K Conference. It's for indie writers, and it's really the conference to go to. I'm probably like 90% going to go again this year. It's in Vegas in uh, November. But one of the things I had been planning to launch a whole new series that was in a new genre. So the Emma St. Clair, the Emma Empire is clean romance, which is kind of like think of Hallmark movies, except maybe less um, dumb. I'd like to think that they're less dumb. They're happy ending romances without a lot of steamy bedroom scenes, without any. There's no steamy bedroom scenes of any kind in these books or language. They're, they're clean. So that's what I've been writing and that's what's working well for me. But I have this sort of hankering and already like story arcs and things written on a young adult spy series. And that category is, is pretty good in terms of the opportunity there on Amazon to do well. So I really wanted to do a three book series. I've got it all 
while outlined for me looks a little different. I basically write a paragraph about it and then I start writing the book. Um, but I've got the paragraphs written. I know where I want the stories to go. And I sat in on a session on how to do rapid release, which is like releasing, writing all the books ahead of time and releasing every two weeks. And I will say as a reader, I started some series this year and it is so frustrating when they're not all ready. Like, I feel like I'm in this perpetual state of frustration waiting for the next books to come out, um, which is really a problem, a modern problem, because books traditionally take forever to come out. But indie writers sometimes do two weeks or a month. Um, and so it's really hard to wait. But that being said, that was my plan. But when I went to the conference, what I kept hearing over and over again is double down on what's working. Really invest and focus on what's already working. And then once you have something working and it's kind of like a fine, finely tuned machine or well-oiled machine, mixing some metaphors there, but whatever, it's working really well, then you can switch and do something different. But a lot of writers, I guess, have the same problem where we want to genre hop and we want to write different kinds of things, which is great. But again, going back to my goals, we're still in a different period where right now my husband and I are both working from home. And so this is not just like what it might have been in the past where it was like, oh, this is a supplemental income. This is just, you know, for fun. And then whatever money I get can go towards savings or whatever else. This is a, we need to pay our bills. And this is really integral to that. And so what I decided is I'm putting aside that other series that I want to write that's in a new genre because that's going to take work to launch. So I am writing that in my quote unquote spare time. But my focus is going to be this year still on the Emma Empire because yeah, I reached my goal. And this year, um, I'd like to start having $10,000 a month months. And this month might be it. I'm holding my breath and crossing my fingers and all those other metaphors to uh, see if I get there. I'm on track to get there or past there, but I'm a little nervous. So anyway, that's where we're at for this year. And I would like to, you know, I have a number of books. I listed out all the books that I want to do um, and write and publish this year. And it's a big list. And so if I want to do that, I have to really cut out the things that aren't serving that purpose. And it's hard. This is the thing that, you know, I don't think people talk about enough that it, there's pain when it comes to cutting back. Same thing with expenses, but I don't think people talk enough about the pain of cutting back on time. And, and I will say the times I had to give up the podcast, it was painful. Um, I have a nonfiction book that's 95% done that I really want to launch. And I think you guys would really benefit from, but I don't have the time right now. And it's not a priority. It does not relate to the Emma Empire. I know it's not going to bring in the same amount of income. And I'm going to have to do all the book launch tactics and the things that I don't have time for right now. And so that is, you know, it, it's painful to me because I, I'm really excited about that book and want to get it out, but it doesn't serve the main goals. And my goals, because of our financial and other situations, my goals are, they need to stay focused. They need to stay on track. So it may not hurt as much depending on your goals and your situation, but it does hurt. And know you're not alone if you're struggling with this because it can be really hard to cut those things. So I want to encourage you that whatever your goals, whatever the ROI, you need to leave some things in your life that bring you joy and some things that like may benefit your emotional well-being and your mental health and your happiness that a time tracker may consider wasting time. So just realize that apps and trackers are machines and you're a human. Um, I shouldn't need to remind you of this. You you know that probably, um, but I'm going to remind you because I want to give you permission to also toss out the things that I'm saying when you need to and give yourself room to breathe because it's not healthy and it's not healthy for me if I'm just work, 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 work. So I build in a lot of time for reading. I've really rediscovered my love of reading this year and it's been amazing. I've been committing to working out and doing other things like that. So that is something you know, that's very important is to remember that you are a human, not a robot. And so those apps can't tell you how to live. Stop trying to tell me how to live my life apps. Um, <laughs> leave room for joy in your life. And I keep thinking of Marie Kondo, but that's okay. We're still not watching that show, but I bet some of you guys are. And you can tell me in the Facebook group, we can have a conversation about what is sparking joy. Cause I know all the things I've been reading all about it and seeing all the memes, but we can, we can have a conversation in the community. Again, that's creativewriting.com forward slash community. And if you want to find all the links for the show, you can go to creativewriting.com forward slash one four eight for episode one forty eight. And the biggest thing that I do is a weekly email, which I'm not cutting out. It's called the quick fix. It comes out every Friday and you can get that by going to 
creativewriting.com forward slash quick fix. I would love to have you in there. So now you have some challenges. You've got to cut business expenses. That's episode 147 from last week if you haven't listened. You've got to figure out where you're wasting time and cut it, but leave some joy. Um, And really, I'm leaving you with this final thought that I always leave you with. Go out, create content that you love, and serve your people well. Well.